What if I told you that some of the most powerful, jaw-dropping motorcycle engines in the world weren't born in a high-tech factory or a billion-dollar R&D facility, but in a quiet English garden shed? Yes, you heard that right. A shed. The kind of place you'd expect to find rusty tools, a lawnmower that hasn't started since 2012, and maybe an old bicycle with a flat tyre. But inside this one shed, engineering miracles are happening. This is the world of Alan Milliard, a man whose name sends ripples through the motorcycle industry, not because he's a corporate giant, but because he's a lone genius turning ordinary engines into roaring, fire-breathing beasts. We're talking 1,000cc monsters, 2,300cc V12 marvels, even an 8-litre V10 motorcycle that makes supercars look like electric scooters. Before we go any further, smash that subscribe button like you're smashing a stuck ketchup bottle at 2am when the fries are getting cold. Because this story is going to blow your mind and trust me, you don't want to miss what's coming at the halfway mark of this video when we reveal the bike that made world records in a single afternoon. Alan Milliard isn't your typical engineer. He doesn't wear a white lab coat. He doesn't walk into corporate boardrooms holding glossy CAD designs. No, Alan is the kind of guy who probably has oil stains on his favourite shirt, a half-drunk mug of tea in the corner, and an idea in his head that would terrify most professional engineers. From his teenage years, Alan had an obsession, not with fame, not with fortune, but with figuring out how machines worked, and more importantly, how to make them work better. While most teenagers were worrying about exams or their next haircut, Alan was sawing engines in half just to see if he could make them twice as good. Fast forward a few decades and that obsession never went away. Today he's renowned for creating motorcycles that seem impossible. Kawasaki-based V12S with over 2,000 cc of displacement, Velocet V-twins that never existed from the factory, and even the Milliard Viper V10, a literal Dodge Viper car engine shoved into a motorcycle frame. The guy didn't just think outside the box. He cut the box in half, welded on another box, and then rode it to the shops. But here's the thing. How does someone without a corporate lab or million-dollar machinery create machines that major manufacturers can't even dream of? That's the secret we're about to uncover, piece by piece. And trust me, the next section will make you look at your shed and think, could I? Let's start with Alan's most infamous method. Step one. Take a perfectly fine factory-built engine and cut it apart. Seriously. While most of us get nervous tightening a drain bolt too much, Alan takes a hacksaw, or sometimes a bandsaw, and slices an engine in two like it's a loaf of bread. Why? Because he sees potential where others see finality. A standard 500cc twin-cylinder engine is just that to most people, a 500cc engine. But to Alan? That's the starting point for a 1,000cc four-cylinder monster. By precisely cutting, adding extra cylinders, fabricating new crankshafts and welding everything back together with millimetre precision, he creates something completely new. Often while retaining the original factory casing so it looks deceptively stock. One of his most famous transformations involved a pair of Kawasaki KZ-1300 engines. He didn't just rebuild them, he fused them into a 2300cc V12. Think about that for a moment, two engines becoming one, perfectly timed, perfectly balanced and fully rideable. That's like taking two toasters, gluing them together and ending up with a waffle iron that can also play the guitar. But this is where the rabbit hole deepens. Cutting and welding is the start. But how does he make these creations not just run, but run smoothly? Because adding more cylinders usually means more vibration, more heat, more problems. And this leads to the part of the process that few ever get to see. The obsessive, almost watchmaker-level precision that comes next. Alan Milliard treats an engine the way a concert violinist treats a Stradivarius. Every single piece is handled, measured and fine-tuned, with a level of patience most of us only reserve for peeling stickers off new electronics. After welding, he meticulously rebalances crankshafts, reshapes pistons, aligns gear trains, and even recreates oil and water channels by hand. And here's the kicker. He does all this with tools that wouldn't impress a modern factory manager. His lathe, decades old, his milling machine, probably saw the Beatles in concert. His most advanced diagnostic tool, often it's his own ears and instincts. 
Despite that, his engines don't just work, they often run smoother than the factory originals. Imagine taking two clunky sewing machines, bolting them together, and somehow ending up with a Swiss watch. That's the level we're talking about. And if you're thinking, he must have a spotless white-walled laboratory for this, think again. We're talking about a shed with oil stains on the floor, a kettle in the corner, and probably a biscuit tin that's older than most TikTok users. Yet out of this humble space come machines that leave engineers from Honda and Kawasaki stunned. Alan Milliard treats an engine the way a concert violinist treats a Stradivarius. Every single piece is handled, measured and fine-tuned with a level of patience most of us only reserve for peeling stickers off new electronics. After welding, he meticulously rebalances crankshafts, reshapes pistons, aligns gear trains and even recreates oil and water channels by hand. And here's the kicker. He does all this with tools that wouldn't impress a modern factory manager. His lathe, decades old, his milling machine, probably saw the Beatles in concert, his most advanced diagnostic tool. Often it's his own ears and instincts. Despite that, his engines don't just work. They often run smoother than the factory originals. Imagine taking two clunky sewing machines, bolting them together, and somehow ending up with a Swiss watch. That's the level we're talking about. And if you're thinking, he must have a spotless white-walled laboratory for this, think again. We're talking about a shed with oil stains on the floor, a kettle in the corner, and probably a biscuit tin that's older than most TikTok users. Yet out of this humble space come machines that leave engineers from Honda and Kawasaki stunned. Still, precision alone doesn't make a legend. The next part of the story is where the shed really starts to sound like a temple of speed. Because these engines aren't built to sit on pedestals. They ride, they roar, they break records. This is where Alan Milliard's work becomes the stuff of myth. Let's start with the Milliard Viper Vive 10, a motorcycle, powered by an 8.0-litre Dodge Viper car engine. That's 500 horsepower on two wheels. Most bikes have an engine the size of a shoebox. This one, it's like strapping a fridge between your knees. And yet, Alan made it rideable. In 2023, he even set a tandem world speed record on it. 183.5 oomph with a passenger. I don't know about you, but the only thing I've done at 183 miles per hour is panic in video games. Then there's the flying milliard, a 5-litre V-twin masterpiece based on a 1930s aircraft engine. It looks like something out of a steampunk fever dream, but it's fully road legal. He's built six-cylinder Kawasaki's, a Velocet V-twin that never existed from the factory, and even a Honda RC 374 six-cylinder tribute built from two Yamaha FCR 250R engines. And here's the wild part. These aren't garage queens. Alan rides them to shows, to shops, even to grab milk. Imagine standing in the Tesco car park, looking at your sensible little hatchback, and next to you is a man on a one-off V12 motorcycle casually loading groceries. But here's what really blows people's minds. Alan doesn't build these bikes to make millions. He often sells them for less than the hours he puts in are worth. For him, it's about the challenge, the art, and the sheer fun of making something that shouldn't exist, and then making it real. Now you might be thinking... How does one man stay motivated to do all this, alone, with no guarantees, and often for little reward? That mindset is the real secret source. Alan Milliard is, in many ways, a mechanical philosopher. He doesn't believe in impossible. To him, that word just means not figured out yet. While most people give up when they hit a wall, Alan starts looking for the door, or if there isn't one, he builds a ladder and climbs over it. He's patient in a way most of us simply aren't. Projects that would frustrate even professional engineers don't faze him. If a crankshaft doesn't align, he doesn't curse, he adjusts. If a welded joint fails, he doesn't see failure, he sees a clue. His shed is less of a workshop and more of a laboratory of patience. And that stubbornness, it's legendary. When critics said his Kawasaki 512 would vibrate itself into dust, he nodded politely and then built it anyway. It didn't shake apart. It ran smoother than expected. When skeptics said the Viper V10 motorcycle was a ridiculous idea, he didn't argue. He just rolled it out 
fired it up and left them speechless. This mindset is something anyone can learn from, not just engineers. Whether you're trying to start a business, fix an old car, or finally get that IKEA shelf to stand straight, Alan's story is proof that persistence beats perfection every single time. But here's where it gets even more interesting. When the big manufacturers, Honda, Kawasaki, even Norton, see what he's doing, how do they react? Do they try to hire him? Do they compete with him? Or do they do something even more unexpected? Here's the plot twist. Instead of mocking or dismissing him, the motorcycle industry admires Alan Milliard. He's been invited to collaborate with major brands, featured in top museums, and honoured at prestigious motorcycle shows. Companies that spend millions on research and development look at his shed-built machines and see something they've lost. Pure, fearless innovation. His builds have inspired a wave of custom builders around the world. People are now revisiting classic engineering, not just relying on computer models or factory limitations. Alan's legacy isn't just the bikes he's built, it's the mindset he's planted in thousands of riders, builders and dreamers. Even today, Alan hasn't slowed down. His current projects include rebuilding rare Nortons, refining his V-twin designs and occasionally dropping teasers that make the entire custom world whisper, what's he up to next? And that's the beauty of his story. It's not over. In fact, it feels like he's just warming up. So what's the takeaway from Alan Milliard's 1,000cc engines and shed-built legends? It's this. Innovation doesn't always come from billion-dollar labs. Sometimes it comes from a man in a humble garden shed, armed with patience, a welder, and a dream. He's proof that the limits we think are set in stone aren't. They're just waiting for someone brave enough to slice them open, weld them back together, and ride them down the street. If this story inspired you, made you smile, or at least made you look at your lawnmower a little differently, hit that like button, share this with a friend who loves motorcycles, or just loves seeing the underdog win, and don't forget to subscribe so hard it rattles your phone case. We've got more mind-blowing stories coming your way, and you won't want to miss them. Until next time, this is Abd Tech Lab, where ordinary sheds become extraordinary workshops.